Hey guys, welcome to the Pure and Clean Podcast, episode number 11. Today we're going to talk about how to make money racing in Star Citizen. So, racing in Star Citizen. I've heard a lot of comments uh, on the forums, on Reddit, uh, even known or famous YouTubers for Star Citizen saying that you will not be able to make as much money racing as other professions and to a certain extent they're right but uh, I want to I wanted to make this video uh, in particular for Slippery Pixels who's a, a great follower of the channel and also to kind of offer a, a devil's advocate for for racing in Star Citizen and to just sort of give the perspective of how you could how the economics of racing could work in the Star Citizen universe so racing is unlike traditional team sports right if you think of you know Seda ball or if you think of uh, the NFL or the NBA right in traditional team sports you have contracts between the team the individual teams and the league owners however in racing or at least in traditional racing contracts are between the organizer of the racing league and the track owners not the individual racing teams the track owners um, and these tracks can be public tracks or they can be private tracks and most of the times uh, they're private tracks but they can be certainly of tracks that are at least in part funded by public tax money right now unfortunately this is not how star citizen will work at least that's actually my guess uh, because we already know by some of the posts uh, 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 on, on the forums and stuff that uh, you will not be you will be able to own certain types of property but you will not be able to own uh, planets or large structures and I would guess that something like a racetrack would probably fall into the uh, parts of the uh, Star Citizen universe that you will not be able to own right so it is very unlikely that you will be able to build and own your own private racing track and it is also on the flip side it is also unlikely uh, that you will be able to act as an organizer and take revenue from the CIG owned tracks, right? So there's tracks that CIG will build. Uh, it's unlikely that they will allow you to sort of uh, buy them or, or you, know, you know, yeah, so like buy them and so you can license racers in those tracks and take a fee from them. That's probably not going to happen. So... Uh, so in that case, there's two ways of making money in racing in Star Citizen. And I mean really making money. I don't mean uh, just doing laps around, around uh, you know, whatever track you want to race on. Um, and you can look at it from two ways. You can look at it from the centralized sport uh, aspect. That is, if, you, if what you want to do is be the organizer or the track track owner uh, and this would be in in real life terms it would be something like NASCAR uh, FIA WRC or, or even CIG if you want to consider them um, and the other way you can make money racing is as an individual racer or as an individual racing team so uh, let's discuss first the ways of making money in racing as an organizer so the main ways uh, that you can make money are, uh, I guess, if we look at the real world, they have TV rights. In this case, we have uh, Twitch rights or YouTube Live rights, right? You, have, you are organizing races and people are participating and you own that content. And you can license it, you can put ads on it, um, you can put advertisement on it. On that note, you can also have centralized advertising. So consider that uh, if everybody's running their own racing leagues or their own racing teams, they're, they're, uh, the amount of eyeballs on that individual race is going to be smaller than if you group all the races together in a bigger series. And that way you can put uh, 
the even the same amount of ads, but you'll just get more eyeballs on it because there's a better story to it, so to speak. And um, another way you can make money as an organizer is by having racing fees. So uh, I guess you cannot really charge per uh, you cannot really charge UEC for a ticket to participate or uh, some kind of fee, but you can definitely charge some kind of entry fee to participate in some tournament. Um, and once you get this money, what you, you have to distribute it, right? So you can distribute it out as prizes to teams or the individuals that participate in your races. Um, or you can, and, and you have to remember that you also have to keep some of that money at least to distribute it among the sports rights holders, right? So the people organizing or sponsoring the event. Um, now, if you want to be just an individual racer or, or even an individual racing team, uh, you can also make money. You can, uh, you can picture that this will likely become an eSport within itself. And that's me projecting and that's me speculating, which I try to keep to a minimum. But if Gran Turismo is taken as a sport and the way Star Citizen is aiming the flight model and the tracks and everything. There is a good potential for this to become a sport. Uh, and um, of course, if you become good enough, then you can definitely have sponsors. You can have advertising uh, on you, you know? Uh, and um, another way you can make money is that running your own uh, uh, racing ship will probably be somewhat expensive. And so, other star citizen organizations within the verse they want to advertise their products and services so they may choose to sponsor at least part of it um, so that you can race and promote their brand and i know that uh at least our organization the pure and clean company is uh is something that we may consider and of course there's prize money right so almost all tournaments will have some kind of prize money and uh, you can win that um, so i wanted to devote some time to lessons learned from nascar and how they could apply to star citizen as the scene starts to grow right um, when nascar first started uh, tracks used to own their own TV rights. So if you were a NASCAR fan or a stock car racing fan and you wanted to follow all the races, uh, if you wanted to follow the entire series of races, then you had to subscribe to multiple cable and channels just to follow the races because every track sold their own TV rights. So you know, you know they went to different channels. Uh, they went through different avenues and you basically had to chase them, which uh, led to um, not enough people watching the races. What NASCAR did is they unified all the TV rights and they sold the NASCAR package, so to speak, to the TV networks. And as a result, more races appeared on TV and ratings increased overall by about 40%. So this was, you know, 40% increase is huge. And uh, this is a lesson that we should keep in mind because I've seen star citizen organizations start to organize their own racing uh, leagues, but they would be better served if they all unified together and they tried to um, get all the racing fans in star citizen to just subscribe to one individual package and as a result, you'll all benefit, right? Because uh, you'll all get more viewership overall. Another lesson that we can learn from NASCAR is that is the way they split broadcast revenue, right? So one of the reasons you may consider not joining a big organization that ju just kind of takes over all of racing in Star Citizen is because you want to uh, you know, have some of that profit, right? And you may concern yourself with the idea that, uh, you know, if I if I join the NASCAR of Star Citizen, then they will just take all the revenue. Well, what NASCAR did is they did not keep those TV rights and TV right monies for themselves. 
yes, they packaged everything together, but they actually split it. And the way they split it is 65% of the money or the revenue went to the track owners and the tracks themselves. Uh, 25% went to teams and drivers and they kept 10%. 10% went to NASCAR. So this, this benefit uh, the host tracks because if you think about it now that tracks have more money from the TV rights that 40% more people are watching and uh, Companies are more willing to put their their logos on Then they can afford to have better quality races and better quality races means um, you know better quality tracks uh, more safety equipment better parking, better concessions, uh, better prices for tickets, uh, overall more quality and everybody benefits as a result. The individual track owner benefits, they don't have to stress out on um, filling out the track days and um, you know NASCAR benefits because they have a better brand because the individual races are better quality then overall NASCAR is better and more fans turn to NASCAR for their racing. Um, and lastly, uh, this is very clever by NASCAR. They align the incentives between NASCAR and the tracks. So um, as I was saying, tracks have high fixed costs, but low variable costs. Therefore, tracks have a natural incentive to run as many races as possible. And by sharing the revenue with the tracks, tracks can focus on providing a better experience and run fewer but better quality races. Uh, and, and, and the reason NASCAR wanted to do this, even though they took less revenue, is because a bad experience in one track impacts all races in NASCAR, right? So now let's put this together to Star Citizen. We already said that there's probably not going to be individual track owners or individual tracks in, 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 you know, Star Citizen. But people are going to be running their own tournaments. People are going to be running their own racing leagues. And if you think about a big organization that's going to lump them all together so that you get more viewership, then, you know, you will realize that some of these tournaments are better quality than others. It's happened with every video game I've ever played. And, um, you know, you will benefit by just, instead of trying to focus on having a tournament each week, by lumping them all together into this big organization, you can afford to, instead of having one each week, you can have one uh, a month. And it can be the best quality with the best streamers on Twitch, with the best audience, with the best racers, and you will get more eyeballs and it will be a better quality product for your individual racing league. And you don't have to worry about providing a content every week because other leagues are also going to be providing their own high quality racing tournament. And this big um, organization, the sort of NASCAR for Star Citizen will align them so that racing fans have something to subscribe to and they have non-stop high quality racing content and so it's better for everyone and that's something um that i hope we can see in star citizen um and lastly i want to touch on uh increasing growth in racing um you want to so one of the reasons nascar is so successful is because uh, they balance competition between large and small teams. You know, racing takes a lot of money and a lot of practice and a lot of effort. And, uh, and so if you start winning, then it's, you start getting all the attention, you start getting all the advertising money, you start getting all the prices. And so it becomes really difficult for the smaller teams that are just starting out. Perhaps they have the talent, but they don't have the money. So. Uh, what NASCAR, NASCAR is always trying to balance that competition so that large and small teams can have a chance to compete. Uh, and that, you know, those are regulations on the types of engines, the types of cars. Um, and, and I would say that that is really needed in Star Citizen. So if you're thinking about starting the NASCAR of Star Citizen, think about those uh, rules so that you can balance competition 
uh, so that you don't end up getting a huge split because this happens in sports all the time. You get these huge splits and then once you have that, then you have to play catch up. Whereas if you have it at the very beginning, then um, it's a better design. And it's better for the fans because, uh, you know, the money is more distributed evenly. Um, they also, uh, NASCAR, to promote racing, they have incentives for popular racers to participate in all the races. So eventually one racer will just be very charismatic, will become very popular. And, uh, you know, they may think that just because they have all this money, they don't have to participate as much. They just have to attend the large events and compete for the large prize pools. Well, there are certain incentives that you can provide to your uh, to your uh, racers so that they keep attending the smaller events. And by attending the smaller events, uh, fans are more happy because, uh, or ha are happier because they are seeing their favorite racer, but also the overall attention and money uh, goes into the small uh, uh, races, and uh, the smaller racers benefit as a result too. And uh, they also have a point system, which is helpful for engaging audience. Uh, that's all I'm gonna say about that. Uh, and um, one thing that's very particular about uh, racing as opposed to other sports is that by design they keep the outcome of races uncertain until the very end what do i mean if you've ever seen racing of any kind they are uh, long events and it's very rare to see one driver uh, pull up ahead by you know a large margin and as a matter of fact races used to be like that and nascar found out that if a racer is winning by several laps or by whatever distance then the viewers just get bored they're like oh okay he won so i'm gonna tune off right so by design they engineer the races so that they're competitive until the very end and an interesting t statistic here is that in nascar the halfway leader, uh, which is the, the driver ahead of the pack at the halfway point of the race, only has 22% 22 22 chance of winning the, the, the race as a whole. So that's actually very cool about racing. And um, if you're thinking about starting racing organizations and racing leagues, keep that in mind. Design your races so that you don't know who the winner is until the very end, so that you have those photo finishes. Um, and and a lot of that responsibility is also going to fall on CIG to create the proper tracks and stuff, uh, unless they give us the ability and the tools to design those tracks. But um, yeah, that keep that in mind. Anyway, guys, that's all I have for this episode. If you have any questions or would like to see a topic address in this podcast, please leave a comment below and I will do my best to cover it. The Pure and Clean podcast is a free weekly Star Citizen podcast aimed at tackling the business side of the verse. If you are looking for a business-oriented organization, please do check us out at pureandclean.com. Even if you thumbs down the video, you made me laugh. So, thanks. <laughs> um, let's see. Successes. I uh, wanted to talk a lot about...